Okay, ha. Uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> English, right? Okay, so now it's time for the second topic, which is the um, power map. So for the power method, this is actually a numerical method. This is similar, similar like when we talk about numerical method, it's similar to uh, you know the, the methods that we've learned before the midterms, uh, such as the Jacobi or the Gauss Seidel, where we only get the the solution that is like an approximation of the true solution, but it's not gonna be the exact solution. Okay, so for example, if the real eigenvalue is four, then you you might get four point zero 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 one. Um, so it's gonna be very very close to four, but it's not exactly four. So this is pretty much the one of the the definition of the numerical method. For the power method, um, we can find only the eigen. And when I said logic, uh, this is in terms of I'm just going to go into the, the, the theoretical proof for the for only the householder method, but for other other types of the methods that we've learned, um, I'm not going to go into much of the detail except for the application. So let's just assume that we have a matrix A that looks like this. I actually get this matrix from the textbook, so you can also take a look in the textbook for reference. Um, for this matrix A, the eigenvalues are 4 and 1. Um, and for the 4, so if you use the power method, you're going to get this one, right? Can be obtain via the power method. And the eigenvector for lambda equals to four is um, one and minus two transpose. Um, so you've known this information earlier, so you just want to use the power method to prove that it can be used to to find four, and uh, and also the the eigenvector. So let's just do you know by hand first. The steps that we're gonna do do is that first step number one. Um, we're gonna have to specify um, x zero, which is gonna be one one. Um, x zero actually x zero can be any number between. 0 and 1, but this is a big but x0 cannot be all 0. So, um, so you know, x0 equals to 0, 0, like that is um, not allowed. Okay, it can be anything, it can be. Uh, x0 can be, you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, or um, 1, 1, or 0, 1, or 1, 0, or whatever. Any number between 0 and 1 is okay, but not all 0, 0. 
So for this example, we'll just use x here is equal to one, one. Um, set number two, um, find the largest um, in absolute value. By, actually, you want to find the position, the position of the largest in absolute value in x0. Um, in this case, x0 is 1, 1, so 1 is equal to 1. So the position that has the largest number is just position number 1. Hence, for x0 equal to 1, 1, the position with the largest uh, value in terms of absolute value, absolute term is one. Okay, so position is not the one. I'm just going to call this position P, or we'll just do it later. Um, step number three, you're going to have to normalize it. Since the, the, the position with the largest number is this position number one and x is one, one, normalizing x is the same. So normalize x zero equal to x zero divided by x zero at position one. So x0 is just 1, 1 divided by x0 at position 1 is just 1 here. So I'm just going to divide by 1 and we just get you know, pretty much x0. Um, step number 4, multiply x0 with a uh, to get x1 so in this case your x1 equals to a x0 which is going to be 2 3 minus 6 minus 7 1 1 and we get minus 5 and 13. Um, in this case uh, by uh, the number in x1 with the Position obtained from step what step is equal to position yeah, step two yeah 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 for the position so from step two in step two the position is one hence the I can value from this iteration is minus five. <clears throat> and you get, you know, the first round of the eigenvalue. Of course, this is gonna be the true eigenvalue yet yeah, because you only do it just once, but you know, this is the first time that you get your eigenvalue. Um, and once you have the eigenvalue, pretty much we just have to do step two again. And so step number five, uh, repeat. So you just have to find the position and normalize it and multiply it. So this is pretty much will be step two to four. So let's just do it one more time. So in step two, <coughs> In step two, the position in x1 with the largest in absolute time is, so in x1, you have minus 5 and 13. So the largest of the absolute value is 13, which is in uh, position number two, position number two, okay. In step three, 
step three, what do we do? We just normalize x1. So we normalize. So x1 equal to x1 divided by x1 at position number two. So in this case, you have minus 5, 13. Everything divided by 13. So your new x1 is going to be minus 5 over 13 and 1. So this is your x1, right? And in step 4, <laughs> um, find x2 equal to a x1. So this is going to be 2, 3, minus 6, minus 7, and times x1, which is uh, minus 7 over 13 and 1. You modify it. You get whatever x2 is. Um, I don't have my number. I think I do have it, but my number could be a little bit off because this is not normalized yet. So this, this one is going to be minus 29 over 13 and 61 over 13. If I'm not wrong, but if I'm wrong, then it's correct. Um, in this case, uh, and again, once you have your x2 here, you go back to step number two. We did step two before again. So once you have this uh, matrix x2, then you find the position in x2, which is the largest one is going to be position number two. Um, normalize it with you know the value in the position number two, and then modify it to get x3 and so on and so forth. So if you keep on doing it, uh, so in this case, um, and since you have this, so the second iteration is lambda equal to uh, position number two of x2, which is 61 divided by 13. So if you keep repeating steps, four um, lambda to approach four, which is the true eigenvalue, and x k to the e eigen vector. Okay, so this is how the power method works. Okay, um, so we'll just do this in um, MATLAB to see how it goes, okay? So just open the MATLAB program, and then um, let me just use the new script, okay? And then um, here, let me just do A equals to 2, 3, minus 6, minus 7, so, you know, if I do um, E, V, D, V, D equals to E, I, T, I. Just want to double check it. I'm going to save this as like power uh, and then 450. So this is the power method for the second 450. Um, run it again, I'm sorry. So if I run it again, then my D is, uh, you know, minus 1 and minus 4. This is my eigenvalue. And my V is just, oops, oh, big V, big V, sorry. So my big V, this is my, oh, the minus 4. This is going to be supposed to be the again vector that I have to get. So just do the power method. Starting with X0 equals to 1, 1. Okay, so if I have my x0, then the next step is step number two here. <laughs> I have to find the position of the largest uh, value in x1, right? Oh, I forgot one here. So the largest value in x1, then I can just use um, m key, maximum of the absolute value of x0. Okay, so uh, remember, this is going to be the absolute value of x0 by doing this 
function, my x0 is going to be 2, 3, 6, and 7. Uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, the x0. My x0 is just going to be 1, 1, the same. So then the maximum number is going to be 1. So m is going to be 1. And p is the position of the maximum number. In case when the two positions are the same, then p will be the, the first one. So p will be 1. So now I get the position. And then next step is that I have to normalize x0. So step number three, normalize x0. So x0 is just going to be x0 divided by x0 at position p. Okay. So now once I have all the normalization, then the next step is that uh, I have to multiply x0 by uh, x0 by a and then to get x1. So my new x1 is just going to be a times x0. Um, this case, I'm just going to run it to show you to do something wrong. Uh, oh, I forgot I deleted that. Let's do it again. Sorry. All right. So now I get my x1. So to show you my x1, this is my x1, 5 and minus 13. Uh, when I have my x1 here, then I'm just going to have to, uh, next step is that, um, so my, my first lambda is just, you know, minus 5. So let's just do it. Lambda. Let me just do it here. So lambda is just, uh, you know, an empty vector. And when I say that lambda is an empty vector, then I want to store my first lambda. Um, hang on. So my first lambda, lambda is just x1 at position p, right? My first lambda is x1 at position p, then I want to store this la into my vector lambda. So it is going to be la and b, and then la. By doing this uh, line of code here, I just put la, the, the, the eigenvalue that I get in line 11, into the vector L A M B. So in the first round, my L A M B will have just one item. In the second round, I'll add more, one more. So in the second round, I have two values in the L A M B, and then three and four and five um, in the next iteration. So this is how I store my L A into the the vector called L A M B. Um, once I store my eigenvalue. Then, if I run it, just want to show you real quick. If I run it, then you can see that. Now, if I show you my LAMB, now my LAMB has the number five here. Um, so the next step is that I have to repeat step two and two, step two to four. So basically, I can just copy these steps here. Okay, so copy and then paste, and then I have to change something. So uh, to find the, the position of the maximum number in terms of the absolute value, this is gonna be x1. And now my x1 is just my x1 divided by my x1 in a new position p, which is position number two already. And then I have to find the new, you know, the new x2. So if I say x2, this is going to be x2 and x1, and then my LA of x2, P, um, my lambda equals a lambda and LA. So if I do it again, then my uh, LA and B will have two values. So now, you know, five, the first, uh, I can value the store, and then the second one is the minus 4.69. Um, so if I keep doing this, uh, eventually I'm going to get my LA and B to reach 4 and then my XK or then, then maybe X10 or X20 will be my eigenvector. But rather than having a lot of X's here, I'm just going to use 2X. So rather than, you know, having 
this x um, x two here. I would say maybe perhaps here I can say x zero equals to x one. So update my x zero to be my x one. Then I can just do x one here equals to x zero. L a of x one. L m one l a. So no no. Um, you can see here that there are lines that can pretty much be copy and paste, right? Um, in this case, I think I would copy and paste uh, starting from here to here. Okay, so copy and paste, paste. Okay, I don't know how many times I run it. And if I run it, uh, as you can see, my lambda is approaching four eventually. Uh, so I just uh, I store my lambda. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I store my lambda eight times, and my lambda is now four already, pretty much four. So rather than copy and paste the entire thing here, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the the loop, right? So in this case, it's just two many kinds of loops here. Um, if I do the the while loop or the for loop first, so if I do the for for i equals from one to twenty, and then I invented everything here, and then emd, um. By repeating everything, this is save it. Then you know I can get my L A M B to be twenty by uh, one. I get twenty L A M B. However, Rani can show you the the um the value. You can see that eventually my L A M B is approaching four. And um, if you see my x1, x1 is just minus 0 0.5 and then 1. So this is going to be my eigenvector. Um, so this is this for loop is going to run the, the loop for the, the number of times that we pre specify. You also have another option that you can do. So rather than using the for loop, so I'm just going to set it as a for loop. Rename first. Can I rename it? Maybe save as power for loop for fifty, and then I'm just gonna save it as uh, power and then wow loop <clears throat> for fifty. Um, for the wow loop, then you're gonna have to have uh certain number of conditions to stop your program, right? So in this case, there are several criteria that we can use. So to stop the power method, there are many criteria. Number one, you can run it for uh, pre-specify number of run. So in this case, you can just use for loop, right? Um, for the second method, you can run it until certain condition um, which uh, in here, I'm going to just talk about two conditions to stop it. The first one is stop, stop when the difference between the new eigenvalue and eigenvector uh, and the new eigenvalue and the new eigenvalue and the previous eigenvalue 
uh, close enough. So close enough, you, know, you just have to specify the, the current or the error that you accept. Um, in the second term, it's just like stop when the difference between the new eigenvector and the previous eigenvector are close enough. Okay, so when we talk about the new and the previous, you just have to have uh, something to store the value for the new and the previous, right? In your code here, if you have um, x0 for the previous x and x1 for the new x, in this case, x is the eigenvector. So you can stop by using condition for the eigenvector easily. If you say wow, or it just means let me specify the error term epsilon. If I say my epsilon is just 10 to the minus 4, it can be anything. Um, 10 to the minus 4. So while wow, my error is less, uh, is greater than the epsilon, then just keep doing it. So I have to say my error is it's just anything that's more than 10 to the minus 4. In this case, I just assume it's starting with a 1 here. So my ERR is 1, my EPS is 10 to the minus 4. Then I have, a, uh, I have to find a place inside the loop in order to find you know, the difference between um, x1 and x0. So I say ERR is just the maximum of the absolute value of x1 minus x0. Um, the difference between the two eigenvectors is x1 minus x0, but um, and here I use max app to be one of the norm that I selected. It doesn't have to be like this. Another option is ERR equals to norm of uh, x1 minus x0. So either way is fine. You can just select any one of the, of the techniques to measure the size of the vector. So uh, you know, in this case, you can use any, any, uh, either one of them. So let me just use norm, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna run it. And then after running it, let's just see my lambda. So now, you know, uh, my code is run. How many times? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven times and then my code stops. Um, because you know I've reached a certain number of uh, error term. Uh, in this case, to make it more professional, rather than having just one condition here, I can also stop when I have run until a number of uh, times have reached. Uh, this case is going to guarantee that my code is not going to run forever. So if we specify that. I'm going to run it no more than 100 times. So I specify my big M to be 100. And then I also have to have a, a K to equal to 1 to start my counting of the number of times that I've run. So another condition that I want to have is that my ERR has to be greater than EPS and also K has to be less than or equal to N. In this case, you know, I'm going to run my loop no more than 100 times. When my loop is more than 100 times, then you know my loop is going to stop automatically. And I connect the two conditions with the AND sign here. So in MATLAB, and for the AND, we'll use the, the double AND symbols. Uh, for the OR, however, we're going to use the symbol. But since we don't have the OR here, I'm just going to delete it. Um, so, here somewhere I have to have a place to count my k. So k equals to k plus one. 
we're running again. It's going to be pretty much the same. Um, now, if I check K, you know, I know that my code is running um, actually eight times. Actually, I have to study the zero, right? So, yeah. Right, the okay, K study the zero. Oops. So when it's starting with the zero, you mean running it one time, it's going to go one and then one more and then so on and so forth. So um, this is my K for the while loop when I want to stop uh, with the eigenvector. But what if I want to stop using the eigenvalue, then um, let me use this one. Okay, so I'm just going to say it again, say it as power and then wow number two maybe so here i want to stop my code rather than using the for or the while loop using the eigenvector criteria i'm going to use the eigenvector uh, value for the eigenvalue then i have to find the lambda from the previous step and then store it and then um uh, subtract it with the lambda from the first step. So let's just say, I have I have my LA here, right? So I'm just gonna change it to the LA new. So let me just have the LA O here. I have my LA O, so LA O is just X zero of P. So this is, uh, not this one, sorry. So this is my first LA. L A U. Well, I'm just gonna have to have my L A O anyway. So we just the first one, the initialization one of the L A O. I'm just gonna assume that it's the X zero of P. So this is my first lambda. And you know the first lambda that I have. The second one is just the next one that I got from from X one. Then if you wanna store my lambda, just L A U. And then um, somewhere around anywhere here, I can say that my error is just, oh, I have to have my error term here. So uh, EPS equals 10 to the minus four. And then ERR is uh, um, this one. So rather than having the for loop, I'm just gonna use the while loop while ERR is greater than EPS, just do the following. Um, so then I have to update my ERR to the uh, uh, absolute value of LA mu minus LA O. Okay. Um, once I have my absolute value, I find the new position of the X, uh, normalize the X in line 17, update the X. And then I also update my LA O to be LA new. Okay. So if I do this, then I'm going to run the code for the number of times that I want. And because I already updated my LA. So if I run it, let's see my LA. Okay. So when we use the uh, eigenvector criteria, eigenvalue criteria, it's going to run two, uh, three more times, um, more, three times more than the when we use the condition of the eigenvector. Um, in this case, uh, ERR equals to one. I'm just going to count the number of times that I run. So K equals to zero um, here. And then I want to specify my n equals to 100 and this is going to say n k is less than or equals to n okay so if i have k less than or equals to n here um i want to count the number of times that i run k equals to plus one okay so if i run it and then voila i get my k yeah, equals to 10. Okay, so um, here I store my lambda to be L, A, and B. Uh, if I want to also store my X uh, in a, a matrix, then I know that 
my x is the is a column vector, right? And I want to store my x to be called, you know, maybe e i uh, or, or just v. Okay, I want to store my x in in a matrix v, and then I want to store it um, column by column in the uh, one iteration at a time. So here, if I after I normalize my x one, I can say that my v is just my v, and then I put x one in the next column. So once I have my new x one, my x one is gonna go in the next column. In this case, I'm gonna run it, and I can show you my v real quick. So this is. This is the first iteration of x1, second iteration, third iteration, fourth iteration. So for the 10th iteration, um, my x1 is minus 0 0.5 and 1. Um, in another, in an, uh, on the other hand, if I want to store my x1 in its rows, so I have to say that I want to transpose my x1 to be in, you know, in a, a row vector. When my x1 is a row vector, then I can store my x1 into the v in a new line. In this case, if I run it, I'll show you, then you know my v is just gonna be its row is the each x. So this first row is x1 in the first iteration, second iteration, third iteration, and so on and so forth. So this is up to you which direction you want to use. You can also change it according to what you want. Um, so this is pretty much it for the power method when we want to do the coding on our own. The next clip is going to be the power method if we want to code it based on what it says on the textbook. Okay, so I'm just going to run it one more time and then set it. Um, oh, so I'm just going to stop it for now. Let's just move on to the, the textbook in the next clip.